We can't cross the wall the dream. Three. Going around the corner, we'll see you on the other side. Two. And action. Fly me to the Hello everyone, welcome back to Backlot Banter. I'm Tanner Dykstra, here to review the film Fly Me to the Moon. Uh, this is a new film with Scarlett Johansson and Channing Tatum set against the 1960s space race that I got the opportunity to see uh, a couple weeks early at a mystery screening at my local theater. So this review will be uh, some non-spoilery stuff at, uh, at the top and then I'll get into some more details uh, just to get you a rounded view of the film. But uh, really excited to talk about this one quite early. But before we get into it, I want to remind you to subscribe to Backlot Banter. We do all sorts of reviews and movie discussions, box office things. Uh, kind of, if, you, if you're into movies, you should definitely subs be subscribing to Backlot Banter. Let's put it that way. Also remember to like this video. And if you want to talk further about this film or films in general or video games, comics, music, whatever, you can join our Discord server. That link is in the description. Um, chat with us. You know, reach out. We, we, we have a good time in there and we'd be... Uh, we'd be happy to have you in there. So, the film Fly Me to the Moon. Um, this is a film from Greg Berlanti, who is largely a TV producer, uh, but who has also done some celebrated rom-coms in the past, like uh, like Love, Simon is a notable one for sure. But here he is really moving up with some big star power in Scarlett Johansson and Channing Tatum. So, for my overview thoughts on the film, um, I liked it. I think it's not without its flaws, but ultimately it is quite charming. It definitely helps that it has that major star power in it and some really solid craft behind it uh, that comes from the direction, but also the cinematography, editing, all of that really strengthen this film. Uh, I'll get into the flaws a little bit, but I want to talk about what I really liked about this. So, brief overview of the plot. Uh, we follow uh, Kelly Jones, Kelly, uh, Scarlett Johansson's character, and Cole, uh, Channing Tatum's character, who is sort of overseeing the NASA, the Apollo 11 mission. Kelly is a ad executive from New York who is sort of brought in to Florida to sort of sell NASA, sell the moon to the American people. And that on its own, really fascinating premise and really works in the movie. It also has this rom-com plot between Kelly and Cole, um, and we kind of get to see their opposite to track, that classic rom-com kind of thing, uh, supported by these two really talented story performers from Hollywood, Channing Tatum and Scarlett Johansson. That part also works. I think this film um, can strike a balance at times and then also can sort of, you know, outweigh itself at times with a lot of different plots going on. Because while that is the initial concept, there is a wrench thrown in here that Woody Harrelson's character, who's also in the film, sort of a mysterious government character pulling, thing, pulling strings behind the scenes, asks Kelly as the person selling the moon to film a backup faked version of the moon landing. This is all present in the trailers, but there is a lot of concepts being thrown at you, a lot of storylines, a lot of ideas in Fly Me to the Moon. And ultimately, how those, how well those work and how well those balance are going to be up to you as a viewer. This film is like two hours and ten minutes long, um, quite a bit longer than your, your run-of-the-mill rom-com for sure, but it's because it's trying to do a lot, and ultimately I think succeeding to some extent, in a lot of those different areas. So, the rom-com plot itself between Scarlett and Channing is quite strong. Um, Scarlett Johansson is really, really good in this. I feel her character is this very self-assured, very confident, very headstrong, gonna get her way no matter what, gonna figure it out no matter what kind of character, and she can pull that off. She's a very self-assured actress at this point in her career. She can sell that charisma. She can sell that confidence very well. Channing Tatum, on the other hand, has sort of um, oscillated in his comedic roles between the straight man and the goofy one. Here, he's definitely the straight man of this relationship. He is very narrow, very set by, by the book, has to do things, doesn't like this ad executive coming in, shaking things up. And their dynamic is quite fun. They have their bickering moments. They have their very sweet moments that I think these characters, these actors can pull off quite well. Um, this is supported by this very romantic look to the film. It's set in the 1960s, obviously 1969, 
and the production design is all very authentic. It has this real golden hour nostalgia kind of look to it that really just makes you feel comfy and cozy while these characters are, you know, talking in a hangar or an office building. It, it never feels cold or sterile, I think, in those moments. Um, as for the NASA plot, there's a lot of different elements to it. It moves quite quickly, uh, whether it be through the initial problem of the funding not being there for NASA and having to find ways to get the advertising going there or convincing senators to come support this, uh, come, come support this cause, and then ultimately filing into the, uh, the moon landing faking sequence. Um, it, it all moves quite breezily, I feel. Uh, and that's a really strong compliment for a film that is two hours and ten minutes long. It's it it, it 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 never feels overly long, or it didn't to me. It just feels like there's a lot that happened, uh, and I think that's a key distinction. At the same time, however, I feel like this film's editing could be a little bit better. It has these very strong moments of these montages. It's very snappy. We are fast-tracking the process. We are seeing montages of things being built. Uh, and these very cool moments of, like, our characters might be moving. Uh, there's a sequence where our characters are moving through a hangar as it's sort of fast-forwarding, building a, a ship behind them. It's very cool to see and very flashy in that regard. But also, I felt at times that there were moments where scene to scene, moment to moment, our characters, uh, particularly Scarlett Johansson and Channing Tatum's characters might have had an argument in a previous scene, and then suddenly, one or two moments later, what where they hadn't interacted, they're just talking like normal, like nothing has really happened, like nothing has really transpired in their relationship. I think it's because the film really only has one big emotional punch in it, uh, and that has to be saved towards the end, towards that third act moment. No, one big emotional punch for their relationship, I guess I should specify. This film has some very serious moments and can lend to being a little bit rocky tonally. Um, I think there's a lot of like historical kind of period goofy uh, comedy for it that might be a little bit outweighing the romance. And then at times it delves into the quite serious, uh, that's, this is a bit more spoilery stuff that I won't get into right now, it can delve into serious topics that um, might, you know, assuage the um, the comedy viewers, people going to this for comedy. It's kind of got something for everyone. I kind of view it as a sort of uh, appetizer platter of a film, where it's got a lot of different genres, a lot of different types of uh, comedy, um, but all anchored ultimately by our two strong leads here and a strong supporting cast as well. They're very endearing. Um, one of the big ones is Jim Rash, who is this... A uh, friend of Scarlett Johansson's character, who's a film director, or not, he's a commercial director, who's very difficult, very uh, uppity about all of the, all of these things on his set, who has to be brought in to direct the fake moon landing footage. And he's uh, there's a lot of comedy born out of him. Um, he, you might recognize him from his role as the dean in Community, and he's bringing a lot of that same energy here. It's very good. There's also some, you know, various NASA characters who are quite cute, quite fun. Um, there's even a little, you know, a side romantic subplot going on there that is endearing. It's heartwarming. It's, it, it's a good time for sure. I guess, ultimately, that's kind of my feelings on the film, is that it can be a little rocky, a little, you know, um, poorly paced at times, but all around, good time, looks good, is funny. I don't think there were any jokes that fell flat in this. There's actually a really fun cameo during one of the montages here that I think works quite well, um, playing in on the audience's knowledge of these stars and their place in pop culture and things like that. You'll see, I don't wanna, I don't wanna spoil it, but it's, it's a good time, it's a really good joke. You'll know who I'm talking about if you see the film. But yeah, I, I, I like this one. I think that it has a little something for everybody. It's very approachable. You can definitely watch this by yourself or go on a date with a partner to go see this. You can even watch this, you know, with your family in the theater or when this ultimately hits probably Apple TV+. Plus. I would assume this is an Apple film. Um, watch this at the holidays. Um, it's got that nostalgia stuff for parents or grandparents and then... Everyone kind of recognizes these two strong stars and Scarlett Johansson and Channing Tatum, so it has, it really is very approachable, very light, very fluffy, while 
packing in a lot of material in it uh, with that two hour, 10 minute runtime as well. And that might turn people off as well. You know, people uh, might be a little suspicious of this film being over two hours long, but at its core being a rom-com and it is that, and I can't, I can't see that as an issue for some people, but I just didn't feel that. I think it packs a lot of its, a lot of its punches, a lot of its ideas into that runtime nonetheless. So I'm going to go a, hmm, I'm going to go a 7.2 out of 10 for this. Good movie, really enjoyed it, fun time, um, but the issues are there, they are prevalent. So that's my uh, non-spoiler thoughts on the film. I'm going to get into a couple different plot elements here just quickly. Namely, and this is this is the spoiler thing I was talking about earlier, one of the big emotional punches that it tries to pack, and somewhat effectively I would say, is Channing Tatum's character was present for the Apollo 1 mission. He was not an astronaut, but he was overseeing the project. And this is something that has cashed in quite a few times across the film, this fact that he oversaw the loss of life of three of his friends, three fellow astronauts, um, and he's haunted by that, and that's kind of, that informs his character, uh, who has to do things by the book and doesn't want, you know, these wrenches thrown into his program because he has to stay focused and make sure this doesn't happen again. They catch that moment in a number of times. One scene in particular where he's sort of jabbed and prodded by this news interviewer, and it just kind of sticks out to me. It, it's it's this like almost like an Oscar clip moment for Channing Tatum, and it really feels separate from a lot of the tone of the rest of the film. Because he's sad about that at times, but this moment he is really flared up yelling and has to be calmed down and sort of ushered out by Scarlett Johansson. It's a good acting moment for Channing Tatum, but I'm not just not sure if it fits with the mesh, the rest of the film, if it meshes with this sort of relatively light and fluffy mood that the rest of the film has. Scarlett Johansson has her own tragic backstory as well that I'll, I'll talk about here briefly, where her mother killed a person in North Dakota when she was young because there was sort of these traveling uh, hucksters and running scams on people, and that's where she learned her skills of confidence and advertising and selling and things like that. And that's, that, that's, that's her big secret. And you either take that out and just have her be this character with this kind of backstory where she, you know, um, she, she doesn't let people close to her, she's, uh, live, she's lived many lives, or she's, you know, she, she sort of puts up these walls of confidence. I don't know if you necessarily need that backstory of, like, her mom murdering somebody, but I guess that is necessary for the uh, plot line of getting Woody Harrelson to f effectively force her to take this job. But I don't know. It felt like a little much at times. I think that is kind of the big problem. The biggest problem with Fly Me to the Moon is that at times it can go a little much on topics. It can go a little much into things where it could be pared back just a tad bit and maybe bring that runtime under two hours too. And yeah, I think that's I think that's largely it. That's the that's the the most of the things that I wanted to talk about. This film looks great as well. This um, I'm not sure what the budget of this is, but a lot of the visual effects are looking quite good. The production design, as I mentioned, is kind of flawless and good running jokes. There's the the cat on the poster that plays a running gag throughout the film and plays a key part at the end of the film. That's quite funny. And these big triumphant moments, you know, it's hard not to get romantic about the space race and Apollo 11 and the astronauts going to the moon. And this film knows that, recognizes that, and knows when to cash those moments in, in that screenplay, in the direction, uh, really bringing out the romantic side of that, uh, that Americana, which is why I think this is really a good summer rom-com. Uh, it has something for everybody, as I've said, and it's got two great charismatic leads in it. It's got that broad appeal to it for people of all ages. It's PG-13. There's not really any real risque material to it. Really enjoyed this one. I would say go check it out for sure, uh, especially because we're not getting a lot of other films like this, especially in theaters right now. Um, we were sort of in the domination of the summer blockbuster era, so go check out Fly Me to the Moon. I would, uh, I would definitely recommend this one. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, if, you, if you saw this early at a, at a mystery screening, I think they're also doing some early screenings um, in the coming weeks for this. I don't think this film has been advertised particularly well, so I just wanted to kind of get my thoughts out there, really say that I, I enjoyed this film and that you should definitely go check it out. So 
Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.